Labor claim it's a humanitarian uh, move that they have made. I just can't believe they'd be stupid enough to touch this policy. Well, look, uh, Peter, it is clear we're going back through the same words, the same actions that have occurred over the last 30 years. Uh, it seems that uh, Labor, when there are no boats coming, when asylum seekers arriving is not a problem, that they immediately start to talk about the compassion and the need of not being weak of heart. But the real mm. problem here is the integrity of the immigration system and the fact that the real compassion, and I know, I've spoken to Labor ministers over the years who have been in tears and who have kept photographs of drowned children with them to remind them of the real compassion of trying to stop people embarking on illegal and dangerous uh, people smuggling efforts to come to Australia. They have seen the past, what needed to be done and what needed to be done to overturn it. Tony Abbott did that mm. and we've had a successful cessation, virtual cessation, of all asylum seekers going f with people smugglers coming to Australia. But it was a tripartite policy. It was turning boats yes. back. It was having offshore processing and it was having temporary protection visas to ensure that people could be told if they arrived here illegally on a boat, they would not be able to stay and have the rights of Australian citizens. That's what it was about. Now, the government clearly believes that that will be used, this change, and they can't say it's not a change. Of course it's a change. But that change will be used by people smugglers throughout the region. And the government believes that. The government knows that. If it's not the case, why is the government running an advertising campaign in Sri Lanka and Indonesia? Why did they go and tell our regional counterparts so why do they it, were Dennis? changing the policy? So why do it? You know, well, because it is so all it? about the, the mandate, the promise. There was a promise made that they would do it. And so I think that the government has been, yes, they've got a mandate because they did actually say that they would do this. That's why they're doing it, because they said they would. Now, they've mm -hmm. certainly done, not done a number of other things they said they would do, do, but this is something they can do and so they have done. I fear, although they've got a mandate, just because you've got a mandate doesn't mean it's the right thing to do. And I think that they have undermined what has been a stable border protection policy and a humane border policy for 10 years. And I think that we will see damage coming to our borders as a result of today's change. And I want to say to Liberals who are cock hoop today who think that this is their way back into office, this will send the boats back again and then there'll be failure and a hit to the Prime Minister's popularity. Uh, this is a dangerous path to take and I'll explain it a bit later. I've got a, a guest coming on, immigration expert. We'll go back to that. Um, the voice, the other great big issue at the moment on the table at the Parliament, the electoral matters has had a look at the machinery bill, the one in relation to the pamphlets to do with the referendum. Um, the report from that committee has been tabled today, split, of course, in, uh, down party lines. Government members saying you've got to vote for this bill. The opposition saying, look, there's got to be better fairness here for both sides of the voice argument. How does a PM sustain this inequitable use, Dennis, of taxpayer funding, you know, literally hundreds, hundreds of millions of dollars sitting there on the Yes Camp side in tax deductibility and, and PR campaigns and, and nothing for the other side of the argument? That's not what's happened in the past, is it? Uh, no, it's not. And, and let's remember that uh, the Prime Minister changed his opposition uh, to... Uh, the idea of sending out information for yes and no campaigns, uh, that is the arguments for and against in a completely neutral fashion posted out to all households so people would know what it was. It was an information campaign. He opposed it. He opposed it for 30 weeks 
at the beginning of this week, even as the parliamentary committee, with his Labor MP colleagues saying, oh, yes, we'll stick by it, we won't have a pamphlet, well, he changed his mind. The reason he changed his mind is he could see that the intransigence in not providing a fair uh, yes and no campaign was damaging the overall mm. campaign. I think ultimately, uh, he's, what the other thing he has said is, oh, well, we'll have equal funding, zero, zero. But that's not the same if you do actually have uh, tax deductibility for the yes campaign, the deep pockets of a whole lot of, of billionaires prepared to support it. It is not fair, and I think that the Australian public, one thing they do want, and they all do want to help Indigenous Australians, there's no doubt about that, but what mm. they do want yeah. is fair treatment, a fair argument, and when it involves a referendum and changing the Constitution, I think what we could very well see is yet another change of tack from the Prime Minister as even his colleagues and strong supporters of the voice to Parliament start to say you are endangering the whole campaign with this lack of detail and lack of fairness. If it was as good as he says it is, he'd have nothing to hide. He'd embrace the debate and he'd put the detail out there. Now, the fact that he is not uh, and he's absolutely waiting one side over the other tells you, as we should say to all politicians, there's something crook in what's on the table. Just before we go, another priority this week from the government is this $15 billion National Reconstruction Fund allegedly reviving our industrial base. I think we all come out of the, a, a COVID saying we've got to get more manufacturing in Australia, so that is a good thing. But according to the Financial Review today, the ACTU has demanded uh, that anyone getting money from this fund must have union agreements and they want union reps on the board. The Greens, too, uh, as, a, as a deal for passage of the legislation, they also want it banned from investing in coal or gas... Now, surely if we're going to have a manufacturing fund and it'll live beyond the life of the immediate government, it's got to be above these sorts of uh, politicking games, doesn't it, Dennis? Well, absolutely. And the go Labor government has talked about transparency and uh, fairness. This will have to be transparent and fair. And the reason we're talking about it this week is because the Coalition and the Greens and the independents have joined forces and asking serious questions about the Reconstruction Fund.